Let's say we want to create a general spin one state. It's helpful to again go through and remember some of the details from chapter one that we first met for spin one half, and now make sure we understand what's going to happen with spin one. So if you've learned the rules for spin one half in the most rigorous way possible, all of your techniques will still work. But there's certain shortcuts that you've possibly been using for spin one half that now won't work when you go to do spin one. So if I have a spin one state, I can imagine writing that as A, my spin up eigenstate, plus B, zero eigenstate, plus C, negative one eigenstate. So the first question is, is this a normalized state? Well, maybe, depending on what my values are. So when we go to normalize, the same normalization relationship still holds, that the inner product with itself needs to equal one. So when we go and we write this out, the first thing to remember is that we need to convert the kets to bras, and we need to take a complex conjugate of all of these coefficients. So I'll write this as a star, and then plus one bra plus b star zero bra plus uh, c star negative one. And you might notice that I'm doing all of my ones this way rather than just calling them sticks because then it just looks like there's lines and side lines. It gets very confusing. So I have this and now I have my original state. So plus one with my b zero state plus z with my negative one state. Okay, so this is my inner product. Now, we're foiling it out, but we actually have three terms here and three terms there. That's a lot of possible combinations. This is where it's nice to have some intuition for that orthonormality point of view, such that we know this plus one state is going to have a zero inner product with zero or negative one. This zero state is only going to have a, a non-zero inner product with this zero. So when we do that, we're going to have a star a and then that inner product. And I'm writing this out here so you can clearly see why the other terms aren't going to contribute. b star b with my zero zero state and then my c star c negative one negative one state. And again, this is equal to 1, this is equal to 1, this is equal to 1. Okay, so what we're left with is that 1 must be equal to a star a plus b star b plus c star c. So if you started with a non-normalized state, this was like 1, 2, 3, then you would assume there's some overall normalization term that then you could solve for right? So perhaps this is this whole thing times c, and so here we would then have this, right, Ca uh, capital C is a terrible choice, there, capital C squared, and if these were already, norm uh, already not normalized, you could solve for c that way, right? Now notice though that originally for our spin one half state we have two coefficients, Overall, there could be some overall phase that doesn't matter. What that means is a phase we would pull out of every single state, for instance, C. Now, there's actually two phases that do matter. So the way you can think about writing this state that I would I'd really say is, is a helpful way to do it, we can choose our first term to be real. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to write this as, uh, well, it's a little confusing when I, when I solve it this way, but let's go for it. So 1 over c, and we'll choose c to be real and, and positive. So, because uh, when I wrote it this way, anyways. So, uh, yeah, I don't love what I've done. So let's, let's call that c instead of switching my notation in the middle. Sorry. So we have some normalization coefficient. It's going to be a number smaller than one probably. And now we have A, and we can also choose A to be real and positive. So both of these numbers get to be real and positive. Great. But the second number can't necessarily be. 
So what I like to do is say, okay, B is going to be a real and positive number, but it gets a phase. E to the I, and we can call that beta. And so depending on what beta is, makes this term negative, it makes it imaginary, it makes it complex such that it maybe has a real and imaginary term. And that has our zero term. And then C, and I'm running out of C-like variables to use. So E to the I, mm, theta, not that original, negative one. And so there are actually two different phases here. So this is what's a little bit tricky, is that when we're defining a spin one state, this normalization term just was coming from needing to normalize it. Okay, so in a way, that's unimportant. That's just normalization. But then to have a physically meaningful state, there are actually three magnitudes of our, co of our coefficients and two different phases. So say that this one is such that, you know, A is one over square root of three, B is one over square root of three. It's going to be a different state whether this is I one over square root of three or positive one over square root of three or negative one over square root of three. Those are all different states. So we now have a relative phase to worry about here and a relative phase to worry about about there. So when you're doing these calculations, uh, don't, don't forget about that.